everyone. Uh, welcome and uh, thank you for taking the time out of your daily schedules to join this webinar. Uh, today we are going to talk about the WannaCry ransomware attack that started really on Friday the 12th of May. Uh, the question is, what is it? Uh, what happened? Is, is it still over there? Uh, is, is there something that we can do about it? Or am I in trouble? And to answer these kinds of things, this is, this is really what we're going to be uh, delving into. By way of introduction, uh, my name is Sahail Ismail, and I'm the sales manager here at ESET Australia. So what really happened? Well, on Friday the 12th of May around 10 p.m. Sydney time, uh, you can call it Black Friday if you like, because it was really a pandemic that hit globally. Uh, it began in the UK as far as we could make out, National Health Service. Uh, many hospitals began to turn away patients and ambulances just because their systems went up. Uh, they were showing uh, displays like the one that you can see here on the screen. So it was, it was all over the place. Uh, and later on the day, it also seemed to go down to Spain, where Telefonica, a large telecom operator, reported these kinds of activities. Uh, it was also reported by folks back in Russia. And, and then the SANS Internet Storm Center noted really uh, significant. Uh, they noted that there was an increase in scanning on port 445. Uh, now, this is an internal port uh, typically that's uh, used by Server Message Block or SMB. Uh, it's a protocol that's popular within the Microsoft Windows family, and the version 1 of that was uh, found to be vulnerable. Uh, in any case, it was being reported that a lot of folks had this ransomware, and uh, this had echoes of CryptoLocker back in 2013. Where, where these guys extort money from you, and they make the payments big enough that you can feel the pinch, but not so large that you just give up and say, never mind. So as of this, this day, there is, there is no decryptor available for WannaCry. So, so if you've been hit with this, it, it's very difficult to say how to recover your files. So, so that's what happened, and this was the trigger for the whole thing. Well, like I said, this thing really exploded globally. It, it was, as I said, a pandemic and the speed with which it affected nearly 150 countries by Saturday was, was stunning. Uh, so, so today we are going to talk about how ESET protects you against these threats and how we managed to stop this ransomware in the first place. I will now hand over to uh, Winnie Dord, Senior Technical Engineer at ESET Australia in Sydney office. Uh, and Winnie will give us some insights on uh, the after effects of WannaCry ransomware and more importantly for all the attendees, what steps you can take in future to protect yourself if, if this situation were to arise again. So with, with that, I will now turn over to Winnie. Thank you, Sahil, and good morning, everyone. So today, we will have a quick discussion about ransomware, and we will be covering what a ransomware is and then also a bit about what the WannaCry threat was. We'll also discuss a bit about the ESET protection, what we can provide our customers so that you will be protected from these kinds of malware. And then also, at the end, this is useful for you guys, and you can pass this on to your customers, the best practice guides to protect you from these kinds of malware. So the first question that we have is, what is ransomware? A ransomware is a specific type of malware that encrypts your data or blocks access to your data. Now, there are a lot of different types of infection methods and lots of different ways where you can get certain types of malware, specifically ransomware. These are just some examples, phishing email, malicious links, sometimes targeted attacks. Sometimes you can see someone just download from a link that was malicious, or sometimes it's actually a pop-up, like you're browsing and then suddenly some window pops up, and then you click on the window to close it, or you click somewhere there, and then it would execute something that would give you malware. So there are lots of different methods. And then usually, it would affect local drive, and then also some network and shared drives. And then um, the most obvious characteristic of a ransomware is that it demands a ransom. Now, the ransom, you can pay for it. You may not pay for it, but when you pay for it, it wouldn't assure you that there would be decryption that would happen, and it wouldn't assure you that you would have access to your data after you paid for that. 
So, with that in mind, what makes the WannaCry threat actually bad so effective? First, the WannaCry ransomware has worm-like capabilities. So what does this mean? It means that it can actually spread without human intervention. If you get infected, you wouldn't know it's there, and you wouldn't need to do anything, it would spread on its own. And that made it very dangerous. So also, it uses Eter Eternal Blue. Eternal Blue is actually a vulnerability that was weaponized by the NSA. It's a sophisticated scanning of vulnerable public-facing SMB port 445. And then it would use that vulnerability as a backdoor to install the WannaCry malware. This makes it very effective as this vulnerability was pretty prevalent during that time. And one thing to note here is that the ransom, as we saw in the previous slide that was shown by Sahil, they're only demanding that you don't have to pay for it by cash, but you have to pay it using only Bitcoin. So what makes Bitcoin special? Bitcoin affords its users a good semblance of anonymity. It has in-person means of cashing out. You can do it person to person. You can just swap codes with another person who has Bitcoins, and then you can swap real-world money. So that affords it some semblance of anonymity when you're a user. And this is, well, Bitcoin's pretty new. So as with all new technology, usually government regulation takes time to catch up. So it's pretty much useful for the people who created the WannaCry malware. And also, one thing to remember from, or at least one thing to note from the, um, this ransomware note is that it really takes care of scaring the user by raising the payment after a specified time and then saying that the files will be lost if payment is never made. So if you're a new computer user, you saw that, you would be very scared. And the tendency is, you would pay for that so that you would have access to your data again. So this next slide is actually a timeline of what happened during that time. So what led to that ransomware outbreak? At an unknown point in time before August 2016, there was an NSA tools leakage. What happened was shadow brokers got a hold of the exploits that NSA developed and then shadow brokers put them in auction. And then sometime before March 2017, NSA informed Microsoft of the leakage. Thus, Microsoft was able to create an emergency patch. It's MS17010. And then it addresses the specific vulnerability that Eternal Blue takes advantage of. They released this March 14. And then a month after this, shadow brokers unveiled Eternal Blue. And what happened was no one bought the tools. So shadow brokers just unveiled all these tools to the public. And with that, black hat hackers now had an opportunity to use these. But ESET moved fast. And by April 25, we already had Eternal Blue Network detection. So we were able to identify this kind of traffic, block it, and thus protect our customers from these exploits. And take note, this happened before the WannaCryptor global outbreak that happened May 12. So we were able to protect our customers from the global outbreak before it happened. And it's a testament to how good ESET is as a security solution. After that, I know you guys heard about the kill switch and how it was used to prevent the spread of the ransomware, which was good. But are we now safe then? Is, is the danger over? And the answer to that is a resounding no. So there are still lots of ongoing dangers, and we always have to remember this. So we mentioned the kill switch earlier. There are already reports of updates to that current malware. Malware that doesn't have a kill switch. It was already caught. People already saw it happening. So the hackers are always developing stuff to make sure that they're always one step ahead of us, or trying to make sure that they're one step ahead of us. And then you have to remember that hackers will always find new vulnerabilities in emerging technologies. So, operas, uh, so OS and software, all of them are man-made. And everything man-made usually has bugs in it. It's liable to error, and that's, that's just the way the world evolves.
And that leads us to the question of, will ESET protect me? And confidently, I can say that the answer is yes. So ESET detects and blocks the one encryptor threat and its variants. And you can assure your customers that not one of our customers using the current product versions has ever reported the WannaCry infection. So all ESET customers have been protected all along. And how do we protect them? We have multiple layers of protection to secure them. And these multiple security layers provide maximum protection against multiple attacks and all types of attacks. And um, this is essentially more layers of protection would allow you to protect against different attacks, and this is throughout the different stages of the cyber kill chain. And speaking of layers of protection, this next slide actually details what those layers are and how ESET would protect you using these technologies. Um, ESET, as a rule, uses, gener um, uses signature technology. We also use machine learning, behavioral scanning, emulation, and other things to protect our customers. Now, the very first one, the network attack protection, this improves detection on the network level. And this is actually the one responsible for blocking the eternal blue exploit. And this would protect you from targeted attacks and network attacks. The second one, reputation in case, this screens and blocks attachments, downloads, and even traffic from known malicious IPs based on their reputation. And then we have the third one, the DNA signature. Now, this module would perform deep analysis of the code, extracting the genes that are responsible for its behavior. This is where we do sandboxing as well to emulate malicious software and then identify its possible attack vectors based on its behavior in that sandbox. And then we have the exploit blocker. Now, this monitors typically exploitable applications like MS Office, Java, those stuff. And then we have the advanced memory scanner. And how does this work? Now, let's say a well-developed new malicious process goes undetected through the other secure layers. Now, this technology would closely monitor the behavior of a malicious process once it decloaks in memory. And this is extremely effective against enclosed malware. And then we have the cloud malware system. This is related to the ESET live grid. And this is the place where possible threats are monitored and submitted to ESIT. And this is the best weapon we have against zero-day vulnerabilities. So if someone within our network actually gets a vulnerability that's very new, the system gets infected, but he has live grid enabled, we're going to use that knowledge to make sure that all the other users for ESIT are protected from that new malicious malware. And then last but not the least, we have botnet protection. So if you ever get a botnet, it would actually detect malicious communication used by those botnets, identify that communication, and then block it so that it would not propagate. So we can delve deeper into how these core technologies protect you in a separate WebEx session, maybe sometime in the future, and hopefully you guys will be able to attend that as well. Now on this slide, is actually a best practice guide. We do encourage you to share this with your customers, and this is to make sure that in the future, if there are always threats in the environment, this is to make sure that they're gonna be prepared for those threats and they're gonna be ready. Um, the first one is always backup files and dismount the backup files. Because sometimes there's gonna be new malware. They might get infected. Maybe there's something wrong with their operating system, Maybe they have some vulnerabilities that we aren't aware yet, and they might get infected. But always having a backup file would protect you from being scared and paying for those ransom notes because you have somewhere to retrieve your data from. And then, as we've seen in the WannaCry malware, it was actually able to um, spread through the network. So make sure that you dismount the backup drive because some people don't dismount it, and then it can also get infected. Um, another thing here is be sure to keep, you, to keep your operating system updated. Um, as discussed earlier, the WannaCry ransomware used Eternal Blue so that it could spread, spread through the internet. And if, if you have an updated operating system, you wouldn't have that vulnerability and you wouldn't be affected by that. So make sure that you tell your customers to always keep your op their operating systems updated. And then the third one is very important. 
you should always use a proven computer security solution. And it, I'm confident in saying that ESET is actually one of the best. As I've mentioned on what happened with the WannaCry outbreak, we were able to protect our customers before the outbreak. So that's pretty good. Now, the last three, um, this actually focuses on the human part of the cyber kill chain and how you should be able to um, help your customers educate them on what they should do and what they shouldn't do when they're in the internet. Like, number one, be wary of suspicious emails and attachments. Um, this is a very common way for malware to spread. Sometimes you would receive an email, perhaps you weren't expecting it, but then a person clicks on that email, there's a download link, and then suddenly that would execute, and then you would see a malware in your system. So that always happens. So make sure that if you're not expecting that email, always be wary of it. If you're not expecting that attachment or something doesn't look right for that attachment, be wary of that. And then I think I've mentioned this earlier, don't click on pop-up windows. So sometimes you would browse, there's going to be a pop-up window. Tendency is you would automatically close it using your mouse. And then sometimes you would click within the window. It would execute some malware. That happens. So one best practice for that is you use Alt F4 to close that window. And then also, don't trust random USB drives. This happened before. Some people saw random USB drives, put it in their computer, thinking that they could use it. But then again, it has an executable file that might you know, put the malware in your system. So don't do that. So these are some best practice guides that you can share to your customers. But um, also on this next slide, aside from those, we do have these additional tools that you could share with your customers. This is to make things easier. And specifically, number one, the first tool is uh, it checks if any computer is vulnerable. Now, it's easy to use. Just give them this link. What's going to happen is that it's going to download and then run an executable file. And then it will automatically tell you if your computer is vulnerable to eternal boot. And then also, we have the ESET ransomware decryptor. Now, this second link, it downloads an executable file that can try to decrypt files encrypted by um, a ransomware from the crisis strain of malware. Now, we do update these whenever a key is found. So it may not decrypt everything, but this is on continuous improvement. And if ever you encounter a customer who needs help with decryption because they got um, their files got encrypted, send us the sample, let us go, and then we'll check. We, chances are we would be able to help. And these, by the way, these links shall be sent to you after the presentation. And yes, make sure that you share this with your customers so that everyone's protected, everyone gets maximum protection. So that would be the end of my part of the presentation. I'll be handing this over to Sahil now. Sahil? Thank you, Winnie, for giving us a deep dive into uh, ESET's cutting edge technology. Uh, that was really helpful. Uh, and uh, what I would say is, uh, this is not over. This was just like a movie trailer, I would say, uh, and we 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 need to take take away some big lessons out of this uh, incident. Uh, you could make uh, the mistake of assuming that it's over and there's really nothing to do, and this was all a false alarm. But but doing that would be a huge mistake. So it's only a question of time before before something that's equally bad, if if not worse, is going to show up. Uh, this this pandemic uh, is is going to affect us all and. So we really need to treat, treat this as a, as a wake-up call, if, if necessary. Uh, so, so this really concludes our webinar, guys. And uh, today's webinar uh, is being recorded. And uh, we will send you the attachment of the slide deck, as Winnie pointed earlier. And we'll also send you the link of the recording, too. So thanks again for joining us today. And uh, thank you, Winnie, for uh, putting this together and presenting this to our viewers. Thanks very much, guys. Bye-bye.